proudly we hail. City where the American stage begins, here is another program of the cast of Outstanding Players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. In this story, Over the River and Through the Wood, proudly we hail the mess sergeants of the United States Army, who feed our country's fighting men and women wherever they are, whatever they're doing, and, if humanly possible, whenever they're hungry. Today, your rapidly expanding United States Army needs intelligent young men, men with ability and ambition, men intelligent enough to recognize the vital need for a strong armed defense, men with ability enough to be trained in a necessary job, Men with ambition enough to secure the future for themselves and their loved ones. Does this description fit you? Can you qualify? For full information on how you can fit in with the finest, check with your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Team up with the Army, and you team up with success. And now we present the first act of Over the River and Through the Wood. November, the day is Thanksgiving. The place is Korea. I know because I'm here. So are 264 other soldiers in Charlie Company. I can't tell you where here is by the Atlas, but there ain't nobody in front of us except the enemy. I can tell you the boys in their foxholes got awful tired waiting until just six minutes ago. Hey, let's slow down. Slow down, Rock. You've got all day to eat. I've been waiting all day. <laughs> I thought you said you were fed when you picked up Abel Company's food. That was just a snack. You want me to go back for more? You've already been back twice. The lieutenant said to eat all we wanted. Yeah, but he didn't say get sick. Oh, there's plenty, but they must have set up enough for two companies. Shrimps, sage dressing, cranberry sauce, two kinds of potatoes, two vegetables. Uh, smoke? Not yet. Oh. Uh, don't neglect the turkey. I was coming to him. Him? Oh, now, nah, Buck, we ain't gonna get in a fight over whether that bird was a him or a her. I ate too much. You ever have better turkey in your life? Mm, yeah. I never. Mm hmm. Once when my old lady's old lady visited us. Okay, but only once. I don't say the Army don't make mistakes, Buck. You know that. But how can it get a hot Thanksgiving dinner to a combat company two and a half miles north of nowhere? <laughs> it almost didn't. You shouldn't have reminded me. You know what I did all morning while I was waiting, Rocky? I dreamed up ways to torture Cabrera and Cumberson. Maybe it wasn't their fault. Oh, well, I'm not rational when my mouth is watering. They were three hours late with the food. <laughs> Another three minutes and Charlie Company would have suffered two unexpected casualties. What do you think happened? Well, ask Cab or Cumberson, I don't know. Cumberson isn't around. He got hurt or something. Yeah, well, then ask Cab. Hey, that's an idea. Cab! Shh! Out in combat, you stupid. Where is he? Over near the food cans with Ainsley. With Grandma Ainsley? Didn't you see him? He caught with Cab and Brant in the Jeep. No, I was too busy looking for a second joint. Where's Grandma Ainsley doing at the front anyway? Hey, everybody always said he liked soft jobs. All I know is he's here. I'll go get Cab. Hey, wait, wait. Grandma and the turkey. <laughs> you know, they remind me of a song. Um, over the river and... Yeah, yeah, now I got it. Uh, you go get Cab if you want. Let's see. Over the river and through the wood, now Grandma's cap I spy. Hurrah for the fun, it's pudding's done. Hurrah for the pumpkin pie, dum-dum. Hurrah, Hurrah for the, the pumpkin, pumpkin pie. pie. Hey, 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 hiya, Buck. Hiya, Cab. 
Last time I heard that song, last time I heard it was in a Halsted Street settlement. Yeah, house. well, the last time I heard it was on a fishing boat off Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. I ain't the musical type. I never heard it before. What we wanted to ask you, Cab, is how come the chow was late? Yeah, and what I wanted to ask you, Cab, is how come you're so chummy with Grandma all of a sudden? I thought you hated his yeah, liver. Well, one at a time, fellas, one at a time. Uh, though I guess the answer to both questions is... Grandma saved my life. Oh, no. It, uh, it all started at 6 o'clock this morning when Lieutenant Mackey called in me and Cumbersome and told us we were the company food guide. He assigned us a jeep and sent us back to battalion headquarters for Charlie Company's Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, he could have made a speech on how important it was to get the food up safe and hot, but our lieutenant is smart enough to know we already knew that. Cumbersome and I took off, and... We found out later, and I wouldn't have believed it if you told me at the time, that Grandma Ainsley, the battalion mess sergeant, had been up an hour before us. Cookie. Yeah, Grandma. Any company guide showing up yet for the food? Not yet. We got everything? I've been telling you every minute on the minute I have. All right, let's check. We already checked six times. Today's Thanksgiving. Let's check again. Look, Grandma, the turkey and sage dressing are in the ovens. The shrimps and cranberry sauce and mixed green salad and olives and pickles are packed in the ice in the refrigerator. The gravy and vegetables, whipped potatoes, candied sweets, beans, corn are in them kettles on the stoves. You can lift the lids and count every bean if you're still worried. The coffee's in the big cans, the fruitcake and nuts and dates and candy are on the tables. How about the cigarettes? Right in front of you, two packs for each man. What's eating you, Grandma? Well, the enemy have been tough for two weeks. You know that, Cookie. You and I have got over a thousand men to feed, most of them in the line. They're American fighting men. I want our fighting men to be fed. That ain't all that's eating you. No? You wished you was in the line. Hands up! As you were. As you were. Everything under control, Sergeant? Yes, sir. I just checked with Sergeant Clancy. Oh. It was the seventh check since Reveille, Major. <laughs> Seven's a lucky number, they say. Uh, break out an extra pack of cigarettes for each man at the front. We did, sir. You mean you will? No, sir, we already did. Well, that's fast service. I just told you to. Clancy and I figured you'd want us to. Clancy and you are getting to know me too well. Uh, uh, Major Black, uh, shouldn't the guides have gotten here by now? Oh, I hardly think so, Grandma. How are things going, Major? Well, how do things go in a war? There's uh, no chance the enemy will break through, is there? You worry about the feeding, Grandma. Let me worry about the fighting. Worry about the feeding. Didn't talk like that to me when I was a platoon sergeant. Here come a couple of guys, Grandma. I'll check them out. Hi, Cumberland. Hi, Cabrera. You come for Charlie Company's food? Where's a mess sergeant, or hasn't he arisen yet? How many miles, Cumberland? Isn't the mess sergeant supposed to be in the mess when fighting men are hungry? Oh, cut it, Cabrera. He's right out there talking to the able company guides. Now, how many miles? 265. Charlie Company guides here for 265, Grandma. Give him 330. 330 in containers on the double, Rascob. That's your Jeep out front, Cumberland? Yep. Put him in the Charlie Company Jeep out front. You two wait here a minute. I'll fix you something. Thanks, Cookie. That's nice of him. Fix his food while we wait. Hook okay. him. You see what I see, Cumberland? Well, on the table. Just cigarettes. Just cigarettes, the man says. <laughs> you wait here. Oh, Cab, don't do it. You get all the free cigarettes you can smoke. What are you talking about? Put him back, Cabrera. Uh Hello, Grandma. I said put him back. You don't have to steal cigarettes in this man's army. Why, Grandma, dear, how your voice has changed. I got a thousand miles to feed, Cabrera. I'm only going to tell you once more, put him back. Better cab. Of course, if you tell me to. Here. Thanks. Your food will be ready in a minute. <laughs> Okay, Charlie Company guides, your jeep's loaded. You sure you didn't give us too much, Grandma? Clancy can count. I wouldn't want to deprive any rear echelon soldiers of their Thanksgiving dinners. I wouldn't let you. Get going now, Cabrera. 
Your buddies, if anyone in your company admits he's a buddy of yours, are hungry. That's an order. Take it easy, Cap. I don't feel like taking it easy. We don't want the food to bounce out. I forgot. Ah, that's better. Hey, look, Cab, I'm your buddy, so I can say it. Why do you get so mean sometimes? Fighting makes me mean. You ain't mean at the front. It's Grandma Ainsley makes you mean. Why does he have to sound so tough all the time, like he thinks he's Jack Dempsey or Joe Lewis or something? You sound tough most of the time yourself, Cap. We're fighting soldiers. They say Grandma was a one-man gang in World War II. I say he's a one-cylinder blowhard in Korea. I don't know. You don't know what? I think maybe he's tough because he's trying to do his job. He sure turns everything upside down to help the boys at the front. You have to admit that. Yeah, if he really wanted to help, he'd be in a line outfit. <laughs> you just don't like him, Cap. I don't like the idea of us getting shot at while he takes it easy in his nice hot kitchen. I'll sure admit that. <laughs> Sergeant Ainsley reporting, sir. Oh, well, in a minute, Grandma. Major Black. I sent one out at 11.40 hours, sir. They should be reporting back any time. Well, everything happens to us in Dick Tracy, Grandma. An ammo truck is late. A uh, mud? No, mud or infiltration, can't tell yet. You know how the enemy sneaks back at the lines and sets up their nasty little roadblocks. Don't, oh, for gosh sake, sit down. Get everyone fed? Well, a guide showed from all three companies. I got them started back with the containers. Early? Abel and Charlie companies cleared an hour ago. Baker company came in late. Oh, that's the right flank where the pressure's been heaviest. Are you here on your usual mission of heroism? Major, you've got to assign me to a combat unit. Oh? <laughs> Is that an order? Oh, you know what I mean, sir. Grandma, how many times have you asked me for assignment to combat? This week or this month. All right, then, this week. Six times, sir. And how many times have I reminded you that at your age, and with that bad leg of yours, you're more valuable in the kitchen than at the front? I can still whip any man on the base. You can whip any man in the 8th Army. Except me, of course. That's not the point. The point is that you've had enough combat to last three lifetimes. You know what they're saying about me, Major? They say I'm chicken. They say you're chicken. <laughs> That's what I'm going to have to tell the general. Well, I don't mind that too much, but I know things that can help them from being hurt. I can't run a kitchen like some old lady when good boys need help. Grandma, you've been in the Army for, what, 13 years? You know as well as I do that a fighting man wants three things, most of all. Enough ammo, dry feet, and decent food. Do I have to tell you, Grandma, that... It's a standing army order that every soldier, no matter where he is, gets at least one hot meal a day. Do I have to tell you that the Pentagon and heaven knows who else has been planning and shipping supplies and arranging refrigeration space for more than a year so that you could serve a hot Thanksgiving dinner today? You're in charge of feeding a battalion including three frontline companies. That's more important than leading two platoons. The child's already gone forward, sir. But you don't know that it's arrived. Some other unit may call on your facilities any hour. Your cooks and bakers need your leadership. You sound like a morale lecture. Well, sometimes your blind heroics make me feel like one. I'm sorry, Grandma. Now, get back to your kitchen and let me know if you need anything. Yes, sir. Battalion headquarters, Sergeant Ainsley speaking. The captain stepped away from his desk for a minute, Lieutenant. I just happened to be passing by. Your food hasn't arrived. I sent it forward more than an hour ago. Yes, sir, Lieutenant, we certainly will. Oh. The dinners haven't arrived and the soldiers haven't arrived. Cabrera and Cumberland must have run themselves into some trouble. <laughs> You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, Over the River and Through the Wood. And we will return to our second act in just one moment. You know, I've always found it to be true that a man with a good eye to the future makes a good soldier. And that's why so many bright young men and women are joining the United States Army now. 
For Army life is an exciting career, and there's plenty of room up at the top. Today, American soldiers get the finest technical training in the world. Every man is a specialist, a master at his job. And the Army sees to it that every man is trained to do his job, and what's more important, to do it right. Because the Army is growing so rapidly, today's soldiers are being promoted fast. Oh, you'll work hard, sure, but believe me, the rewards are really well worth it. Right now, the Army needs healthy, intelligent young men and women, volunteers from 18 to 34. So if you've got what it takes, then you think seriously about an Army career. Stop in at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Get all the facts about what the Army has to offer you. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Over the River and Through the Wood. While Lieutenant Mackey was calling battalion headquarters to report that Charlie Company's riflemen hadn't received their Thanksgiving dinners and were getting madder by the minute, the reason was chattering on a hilltop just 500 yards in front of me. It was an enemy machine gun unit that had sneaked back of our lines and set up on the jeep trail. It pinned Cumberland and me down as we were jogging forward with the food. You all right, Cab? It's all right as a man can't be lying under a jeep in a mud puddle. Yeah, they were high again. Guess they can't reach us. What do we do now? If I stay here with the food, you'll make a run for help. Shouldn't we try and get the gun? Well, there's only two of us coming. We could flank them, and we got grenades. Yeah, but suppose our try doesn't come off. I'm not scared. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm scared, but I'm not too scared to try. But who gets the food forward if we don't get the gun? You better tear back for help. Well, let's match for it anyway, Cab. Won't be good here if they rush the jeep. No, I stay here. You're bigger and make a better target. I bet you wish tough old Grandma Easley was with us now. Hey, what could tough old Grandma do? You can't talk your way out of a spot like this. Now crawl, cumbersome, and stay low till you get beyond the turn on the trail. Stay low! Stay low, cumbersome! <laughs> Got the idea now, Brant. Steady but slow. It must be somewhere along that trail. We don't want to miss him. Hold it. Flat on the road, Brant. With the carbine. All right, out there. Step out with your hands up. Behind that broken tree, Brant. What? It's that big sidekick of Cabrera's. That means we found him. What happened, Cumberland? Grandma. Oh, hi, Brad. What you doing here, Grandma? Trying to find out why you couldn't get the dinners forward. An enemy machine gun set up on the jeep trail and pinned us down. Anybody hurt? Uh-uh. At least I'm not. And Cab wasn't when I left him. Well, climb in. How far ahead is it? Oh, maybe two miles. Walking 40 minutes. Pick it up a little, Brad. <laughs> All right, what's so funny about having a buddy pinned under a jeep? What ain't that? Excuse me, Grandma. It's you. <laughs> You look like you're stuffed out to be the fat man at a party. <laughs> How many grenades you got on you? A dozen? Thirteen. I always like to start out with thirteen. You ain't supposed to be armed and coming forward for us like this, are you, Grandma? Nobody told me not to. I feel good you're with us. Thanks, Governor. Maybe I'm too old to fight like the Major says. Maybe even Majors can be wrong. You better forget I said that. <laughs> Major Black's right about one thing. This man's army, soldiers get fed. Last Thanksgiving, the Major himself delivered dinner to a mountain outpost that could only be reached by cable. You mean wire, not cable, don't you, Grandma? No, I'm talking about transportation, not communication. The only way to get anything to the outpost, including men, was in a basket run across by cable from another mountaintop. I never heard about that. The whole army should have. Can you tell us? Well, I'll start anyway. Both of you, keep your eyes open for Cabrera. Well, the outpost was seven miles from our battalion kitchen. The major and a Korean bearer and I went up the first five miles by jeep. It took us three and a half hours to give you some idea what the country was like. You didn't say you were in the party. Well, I'm saying it now. And then we climbed a 3,000-foot mountain with the food on the Korean's back. He was some man. He could carry 100 pounds like you or I could carry an overnight pack. Well, at the top of the mountain, there was this steel cable tramway, I guess you'd call it, 
running across the other mountain where our men were. Well, the thing that uh, ran across was a homemade basket shape, sort of uh, like a mummy case. We got there late on a bright moonlit night. Yeah, yeah that takes care of the food. And there's still room for a man. Good. Come on, Grandma, help me in. Let me go instead, Major. Not on your life. But if the Reds on the other slope, is this moonlight, they'll, they'll see you. They'll be a sitting duck for a small arms fire. Well, come on and help the duck sit down. Oh, please, Major Black. No. <clears throat> okay, signal them, Grandma. Three flashes. Here I go. Made it. Thank you. Thank you, good Lord. And did the Major get back safely, too, Grandma? Well, that wasn't so bad. We waited till the moon was hidden. Why didn't you wait till it was hidden to send him over? Well, he had the food with him then. He said later the boys on that outpost wanted to elect him president, didn't <laughs> they? <laughs> Thanksgiving sure your day to howl, Grandma. Last year was a cable tramway, and this year it's my Jeep. <laughs> well, we're getting close now. Hold it, Brian. Cab's right around the bend, Grandma. Let's take a look. <laughs> Here's the Jeep. Cab looks all right. We'll make a run for him. Now, wait. They're behind that bare tree on the rise. Oh, yeah. The dirt at the base is piled too high. Now we run. <laughs> Who'd you expect, the Marines? Everybody all right? Me and Brad are. Cabrera? I'm, I'm, I'm healthy, but hold up. Yeah, so I noticed. Look, uh, not counting you who've been fed. There are 263 men up there waiting for their child. They're waiting while you play footsie under a jeep. Well, they, they have a, a machine gun on the ridge, sir. The enemy wouldn't have a machine gun any place if you knocked it out. Well, we thought we shouldn't leave the food. I said we should have left it, Cal. All right, let's cut it. Brand's got only a carbine, so he stays here with the food. Cumberland's the biggest, and I make the most noise. All right, that leaves Cabrera. You willing to take a chance with me, Cabrera? I owe you something besides talk, Sarge. All right, that's good talk. All right. Cumberland, go back and work your way around to the gun's left flank. Stay out of range, but don't worry about noise. I want them to know you're there. When you get within 100 yards, no closer, find yourself some cover where you can't be hit. You got a watch? Yeah. What's it say? 1403 hours. Good. I have the same. Now, I'm giving you 17 minutes at 1420. Make a commotion. Make all the noise and fuss you can, but stay under cover, you hear? Okay, Cumberland? I'm off, fellas. We'll have to crawl out, Cabrera, so they'll think we're still here. Ba baby's waiting, Grandma. Okay, baby, let's crawl. Sure. Why stop? You're limping. Ah, uh, keep your eyes to the front. Say, can't you take a break a minute? We only have a minute. See him? You handle the grenade? Yeah. When we hear Cumberland, I throw, you throw. Then we rush. You can't rush. Then we rush. Do me a favor, Cabrera. Yeah. Don't tell the boys I passed out. Who passed out? You got that enemy gun practically single-handed. Cumberland, all right. Gee, Grandma, you don't even remember ordering them back in the other jeep, do you? It was only a flesh wound, you said. Ah, right, here we are. Hey, we made it, gang. We're here with the turkey. Yeah.
All right, cut it. Cut the noise. I know how you feel, but you don't want to scare the enemy to death. <laughs> Lieutenant Mackey took over and ordered the jeep unloaded and the men to come back for their dinners two at a time. I helped Grandma out of the jeep. He could hardly walk, but he insisted on reporting to the lieutenant. And then he and I sat down. Uh, uh, can I get you some chow, Grandma? Let's watch your boys for a minute. Here come the first two now. Hey, hey, what's it look like to you, Rocky? It looks like turkey. What's it feel like? Feels like hot turkey. Oh, it's a shame you can't believe what you see and feel at the front, isn't it? Mm. Is the cranberry sauce fresh? Mm-hmm. It's fresh. And is the salad well seasoned? Yeah. Ah. And the mince pie full of spice? Mm. Mm. Then Cab Cabrera's very lucky. <sighs> Why lucky? Because if a single one of those conditions had not been met, I would have drowned him in his helmet liner in ice cold coffee. Come on, Buck. We ought to give the others a chance. No, no, no. Just just one one taste for me, Rocky. Oh, now that's sage dressing. <laughs> I've been sweating this out for the past six hours. Yeah, I'm coming, gang. Now we can get on with this here now war. Grandma. Yeah? Does watching them fill their plates make you feel as good as it does me? It makes me feel good. Will you do me one favor? What, Cabrera? Next time I crack wise about Miss Sergeants, will you uh, drown me in my helmet liner in scalding coffee? Ask anyone what they want most out of life, and a great majority of the answers can be boiled down to just one word. Happiness. Well, now, happiness is a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but basically, you might say that it's the achievement of your goals. To be happy is to be successful in whatever you do. And in today's highly specialized world, training is the key to success. If you're a young man of service age, you can get free training worth thousands of dollars by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. Now, under this plan, you can enter the course of your choice and be trained in such interesting fields as X-ray operation, photography, automotive maintenance, and communications. In all, there are over 100 courses to choose from. So, for complete information on how you can benefit from this program, you visit your local United States Army recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army, and this is PFC Richard Hayes speaking, and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>